Welcome to FL Studio 20.1, Exposed. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over some of the smaller changes. The first changes you may notice is that the swing is directly editable in the channel rack title bar by a knob. This is no longer a slider, but it is a text box to edit the number of steps that goes up to 512 now. You can select a number of tracks and select the swing mix directly for the selected tracks. And you can now close the channel rack by clicking the X. Before, if your part was longer than what was shown in the channel rack step sequencer, then you were out of luck, you couldn't see everything. Now you can go to show complete piano roll preview and see the entire thing in your step sequencer. If you click the gear icon on an effect, you now have a mix level to adjust how much of the effect is applied at that specific point. You can also turn the effect on and off, and you can solo the effect, which mutes all other effects on the channel. It's pretty cool. You can now view the frames per second in the CPU meter instead of the voice count, but you cannot see both at once. If you hop over to project information, you can now see how many plugins, how many channels, how many mixer tracks, how many playlist tracks, how many playlist clips, and how many notes are in your project. FL Studio can now automatically check for updates. When you go to export your project, you now have the option of exporting mono with left and right merged together, mono left only, and mono right only. 55 minimal kick samples. Z-Game Editor Visualizer now has a video export wizard for making those cool videos that people put on YouTube with the moving pictures and all the th music. And uh, If you have a track that has nothing in it anymore and you want to reset it, you can go to Tools, Macros, Reset Empty Playlist Tracks. And now everything is shifted back as if that track was never there. FL Studio also has two new loop modes for the Channel Rack Step Sequencer. So let's just listen to this beat. It's not very interesting, so let me increase the size of the step sequencer here, turn on loop all channels, and now I can add some extra flair to the hi-hat track, and we can see that the kick and snare tracks are automatically looped, as you can see in this gray area. I'll play it for you. So the snare and kick tracks are looping their original parts. But the hi-hat part that we added works as it is. But what if we don't want the kick the loop and we don't want the snare to loop? We can turn those off and now we get this cool like drum break sound. And just like that, we can go ahead and loop whatever we want. And if you like something, you can burn it to pattern, which permanently makes this part of the pattern. Let's start with that beat again. Now we'll increase the size of our channel rack step sequencer. We'll go to advanced looping. And now we can individually control where and when each channel is looped. So on the kick, let's set it to step. So now it loops after the very last step. Or I can go to three. So now it loops every three steps or seven. Now we have a rotating sound that doesn't sound the same every time. Let's go ahead and add the snare. Let's put the snare at 10. Now we get this funky little rhythm. And we can control every single channel however we want, and it will loop at the point that we want it to loop at. Another cool thing you can do now is automate the time knob for sampler channels. So I'm going to go ahead and create an automation clip for that. I will take this knob and mess with it a little bit and then we'll hit play and see what happens. Wow, that's actually a lot of fun. According to the changes, you should be able to do this on audio clips as well, but that's grayed out. It would be cool if you could though. All right, it's the big thing now. It's track mode. I can drag an effect directly to the playlist and it creates what is called an instrument track. Now when I move it around, it moves around in the mixer. If I change the color, it changes the color everywhere. If I change the icon, 
It changes the icon everywhere. Isn't that amazing? Mm, yeah, not really. So what happens if I go ahead and make something else here? Let's just go ahead and click in random notes. I'm sure that's going to sound awesome, right? So if these are all linked, when I move this track, it shouldn't play on Mixer Channel 5 anymore, should it? Oh, that sounds awesome, just like I ate some chili. But even though it's on track 2, it plays on track 5. Even though we're on track 1, it's on track 5. It doesn't really link things. It links the color, and it links the track icon, and the channel links to the mixer, but that's all you get. It's just kind of like a little shortcut. It's not nearly as amazing as ImageLine tries to make it sound. It's just a little shortcut that doesn't do much for you. But what about if you do audio? You can record audio in a new track mode. So let's try that. Go to track mode, audio track. Let's do insert five. I'm going to set that to the microphone I'm currently talk talking through. through. And, and here, here we go. go. I'm, I'm just going, going to, to talk. talk and and one, one, two, two three, three, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. blah. I've recorded some audio here, so let's record some more. Talk, so I'm and talking, talking one, and two, here three, we go. go. Oh, uh oh, it recorded both my new audio and my previous audio. So now what you need to do is mute every single previously recorded track and then we do it again. Okay, see, now the previous channel isn't recorded anymore. Uh, so let me turn this off here and so this is supposed to give you a way to have takes essentially so you can create a composite track of whatever but needing to mute things is a terrible workflow it's just it's absolutely awful plus this eats up tracks you can see how we're on track four and FL studio has a limited number of tracks Along with this, let's try something else here. Let's try a new track, go to audio track, insert 10, doesn't matter. So now if I move this clip over here, it's on track 10. But what if I want to move this around? Let's move that to track five and let's switch something else. Oh, it's back on track 10. So this is automatically setting everything to track 10 and we can't change it unless we change it here. Now it's on 11. Let's change it back to four. Move something away, move something back. It stays on four. It's, it's bugged, like it just doesn't work right. And on top of that, the workflow of having to mute everything as you work and unmute it. And what if you have clips here that you wanna to listen to while you're doing an overdub? You can't do it that way. You can't do it like a normal DAW, like Cubase or Pro Tools or Reaper or whatever else you use. You still have this really annoying workflow that just isn't that great. So what's the deal? FL Studio 20.1 is a pretty cool update, but it's definitely a point one. Uh, I wish they would have thought through some of these issues, like maybe actually try to use the take recording thing or the audio track modes, like it's a cool looking feature, but once you actually try to use it in a project, um, the workflow is really awkward. Uh, the instrument track mode thing works pretty well, but playlist tracks still don't track channel and mixer connections. So if you move your clips around, the playlist track doesn't actually do anything. So it doesn't link things like the audio track mode. All of the other features are super neat. This is, of course, a totally free update. So I think it is pretty, pretty amazing what they add. Hopefully in like a 0.2 or 0.5 update, they flesh out these new track modes so that the workflows are worth using. Until then, um, you just get everything else. It's free. What are you going to complain about? It's the software's just getting better over time. AdamRobumblebee.com, Patreon.com slash AdamRobumblebee. Hit the subscribe button. English is hard.
Thank you.